Hello everybody, I am Hoarder Gamer, and this is Comicus. Yes, that's the that's the dramatic way I have of saying welcome to Comicus. And uh, we have a number of comic books we'll be looking at today. Uh, today's going to be four books. Usually Comicus will just be three books, but uh, we had a couple special streams recently. So we, Comicus last week, I believe, was four books, and it's uh, four books this week as well. So... Some interesting books. Um, one of them really surprised me, actually, because I read a previous issue of it, and it was just like, that's pretty good, but not great. And uh, I thought it was just still sort of okay. Then I read the second issue of it, and I completely changed my mind. Um, I can see now what they're trying to get at in the first book, and uh, it's really well done. It's one of the better books out there. It's one of the more daring books out there. So I look forward to talking about that. Um, but first off, let's, uh, I just want to say hello to everybody. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions on uh, comic books um, that I'm talking about or anything like that, or review process or anything like that, let me know. I'd be happy to answer. And um, give me one second. I do want to make sure the mic is working. We had issues with the mic the other day. Okay, that seems good. So that's nice. That's a, that's a good thing. Um, so first off, I'm going to show you the books in no particular order. Here we go. We have The Walking Dead. And this is issue 168, known as The Road's End. Okay. We have Rocket, issue 2, with a very colorful little cover right there. This is Batman 24. And it's a Tim Sale cover, excellent artist. Uh, done some very iconic work of uh, Batman and Catwoman on the cover. If you've been hearing about rumors and things like that and uh, news, you probably might have heard what that's all about. And then we have Darth Vader issue one. Um, that we'll be talking about that shortly. Really nice cover. Love the cover on it. Um, there's an issue I do have with the book. We'll talk about that shortly, because um, I usually don't get into a lot of you know information right now in the book as I'm just sort of showing them to you. So these are before combatants for Comicus this week. So again, anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer for you. Um, yeah, we're basically going to start up with our first book. And uh, that is going to be The Walking Dead. Now, anyone who knows Walking Dead can probably tell even from the TV show, uh, that dude right there is Negan. So we got Negan in there. And um, that surprised me because I know the TV show is way behind the comic book. And I would have figured Negan would be dead. Um, he's such an insane, dangerous, frightening enemy that... Uh, He's nearly psychotic, for God's sake. Um, that I just figured he would be gone. But somehow we're at 168. There he still is. So I wasn't expecting that. Um, Governor, I don't think, lasted anywhere near as long as Negan. Um, now, a little background. I read the first uh, 24 issues of Walking Dead. That was the first two years, roughly, because it's 12 issues a year. And I liked it. I thought it was really good. Um... The second part of it I read in trades. Yeah, I think there were six issues in each trade, so two, two volumes of trades and then the first 12 separate issues. Um, I liked it. I thought it was good. And um, the TV show, I don't know, I kind of drifted away from comic books for a while, almost totally. And then the TV show happened, and I just watched the TV show. And initially I was like, well, I'll just watch the show and not the comic. But I think that they're going to make some huge different changes and everything. So, you know, big broad strokes will probably be similar. But I think that um, smaller strokes will be quite different. So I'm interested to see how that's going to work out. And I really don't know if that dude Negan is going to be this far into the story in the, um, in the TV show. I sort of doubt it. I don't know. Anyway, um, this book, it's um, it's good. Uh, the problem is it's issue 168 and the road's end. 
So basically, it's like I've come into the end of the story, and uh, there's a gentleman who's not named, who does a lot of talking, and I don't know who that is. And I don't believe in having to do research to do this, to do Comicus, because the point of it is, if I just went and grabbed an issue of a book, would I be able to understand it, or what would I think of it, and everything like that. That's the way I like to look at it, as well as a review. And um, the artwork is good. I mean... Um, it's, it's what you'd come to expect from um, Walking Dead, very similar uh, art style. Um, basically, uh, it's a lot of talking. <laughs> I kind of wish I would have chosen a different issue of Walking Dead. Um, you don't even see the gentleman here on the cover, but there's a gentleman who's missing an eye, or he has like a glass eye. I'm not sure. And he's wondering about Sherry. And the entire story is, well... Uh, Sherry's dead and everyone freaking out over that and like t two like sides basically and the gentleman with a glass eye is like okay well that's you know if she's dead everyone's dead and then the weirdest thing Negan steps in and takes over for no joke I want to say six to eight pages of the book just speechifying with tons of f-words and uh I, I don't know what's going on with Negan in the comic book. It was fascinating because it's like Rick is on Negan's side now, which on the TV show would be like insane. Like, I don't know how the hell Kirkman explained that, but they don't seem to be straight up enemies anymore. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it's like in his own twisted, warped, psychotic way, uh, Negan is able to consider, uh, basically able to talk the dude down who has a glass eye into not killing everybody, and then everyone's good for the rest of the issue. Um, like I said, it was good, and if you like Walking Dead, I think you'll enjoy the issue, but um, I don't know who the gentleman with the glass eye is. I wish I did, and um, it's hard to say. It's like, you know, it's the way they do the book. Like, I believe this one was black and white i've read all these other books are in color so i'm like freaking out now i was like was it black and white yeah it sure as hell is okay because <laughs> i could have sworn it was that i'm like i don't want to say it is if it isn't um but no it was good it just it seemed like an odd issue for me to choose i don't know yeah 168 was not the best choice you know i could have chosen a better um issue to look at uh but yeah it was good Next up, we have Rocket, Rocket Issue 2. Okay, this is a journey, let me tell you. A little background on this. I read Issue 1, and I really didn't like it. I thought it was going for this 1930s kind of gangster thing, and I legitimately didn't feel it pulled it off. I felt like, and then also unlike a normal comic book, it's a lot of prose, like writing on the side instead of like actual panels and then just large pictures uh, for certain pages and stuff, which was really interesting. But I just didn't feel that it, it did it everything correctly. I don't know. Everything seemed to be off with the first issue and it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. And I was kind of iffy towards it. Issue two is so much better. Um, <laughs> Basically, it's uh, a similar style and everything, but the characters, the events, the dialogue, everything seemed much better, much more realistic. Um, nothing seemed forced. Rocket 2 was really good. Rocket 2, much better than issue 1. Um, I think it's an impressive book. Basically, like I said, you've got that whole prose style. More prose than comic book. There's comic book panels too, but a lot of prose going on, like in the sides and everything, and like written sentences and paragraphs. Almost like you're reading part of like a, uh, like a Raymond Chandler novel, something like that. Um, but yeah, what happens is basically Rocket's in court, and it's a flashback to him doing a heist at a place called the Vault, and uh, the Techno Net, I believe it is the Tech Tech Net. There's different versions of all these heroes and villains in this place. And one of the best parts is, it, it's great, it's not like a spoiler, but it's so fun, is that he has these weird doppelganger versions for his lawyers. Um, Matt of Matt, instead of Matt Murdock, it's this like lizard looking guy. 
and then it's a frog dude as Froggy Nelson, literally a frog, but the names are different. Uh, very funny, and the entire book has that entire, uh, doesn't take itself too seriously, but is still clever, and isn't just like, you know, dumb humor, like some books that I will not mention right now. Um, but no, Rocket 2 is really good, I really enjoyed it. Okay, everybody, that was the first two books that we're looking at for Comicus this week. In just a moment, we're going to take a look at the third and fourth books that will be competing. So, one second here. Okay. Next up, we have Batman issue 24. Now, what's interesting about this book is there was some hubbub, some... Um, you know, news and people talking about it before it even came out as to what occurred in the book. But that's a really small sliver of the book. Uh, most of the book is Batman talking to Gotham Girl, and the Gotham Girl is part of a duo, or was part of a duo, of her brother Gotham and then Gotham Girl. They were in the first story arc of Batman Rebirth. And what happened was... And there's this dude named the Psycho Pirate, who's very dangerous, and he was screwing around with them and basically using them to do terrible things. And uh, the most fascinating thing, though, about um, both Gotham and Gotham Girl is when they use their powers, they're actually draining their life. They're actually killing themselves. So it's similar to Spawn, except instead of going to hell, they just die. And they're both really young. Um, like, you know teenagers just in their early 20s they're so it's a really interesting storyline and basically she, um, Gotham girl she's not on the cover here she goes to um, Batman uh, for advice as to what she should do now that you know everything's over and you know she wants to be a hero but she also doesn't want to die so it's this interesting story about um, Batman explaining that you know there's other ways for her to fight you know, she could learn, like, uh, martial arts and things like that from a man he knows in Europe. I'm not sure who that's going to be yet. Um, and that uh, she could actually do that and still be a superhero. And it's this conversation between her and Batman where you find out about Batman's fears and you find out about, like, um, what's it like to be in the Batman shoes every day, you know? Uh, the whole thing is, like, I'm not the Batman because I want to be. I'm the Batman because I am Batman, um, which is interesting because it's like, you know, he doesn't do this for kicks or for fun. He knows that if he doesn't, no one else will. Uh, they also won't do it, you know, you know, there's Wonder Woman or Superman. They do things differently, though, and he knows that. So um, at what what is uh, usually I don't like do spoilers or anything like that, but it's hard not to spoil this book with all the notoriety behind it. So it all culminates with Bruce going to meet Selina Kyle and basically asking her to marry him. And we don't get an answer. Um, there's no answer to it. And uh, that leads into the uh, War of Jokes and Riddles, which I'm really looking forward to. And it's been a heavily advertised story arc for Batman. So that should be really good. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. And next up, we have Darth Vader, issue one. Um, the art is awesome. If you're a Star Wars fan, I think you're going to love the art. It's beautiful. Um, I do have issues with it. First off, take a look at that. Well, oh shit, you probably can't see that. I'm sorry. It's going to be hard for you to see it. There we go. Now it's focusing. So, I think $4.99 for an issue of a comic, even if it has a digital version of it, which I don't even use, so it's useless to me, should not be. I don't think it should have been $4.99. Uh, there's a story, and then there's a mini short story, but I'd rather them save the little comical short story that looks like it could be in Cracked Magazine uh, than to charge me $5 for the book. Most Marvel books are $4, you know, and that's, and that's with the digital content, so... I just think it's lame that they decided to go that route and charge $5. I might just wait for the trades. If issue two doesn't pick up a lot, I might do that. So what's here is interesting and cool, but the problem is there's not all that much here. Basically, it starts right 
at the end of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, where Vader goes, no, um, and screams no, and it goes right from there. And from there, we have the Emperor talking to Vader, explaining what happened to Padme in more detail, and then explaining that he needs to get a lightsaber because he no longer has one. Now, the cool thing about this is we find out that the red lightsaber of the Sith is red for a very specific reason, because the crystals bleed. So what happens is the kyber crystal, which is inside a lightsaber, is a living thing in its own way. And a uh, Sith takes their hatred, their pain, their anguish and anger, and they fill the kyber crystal with it. And it basically makes the kyber crystal suffer and change color to red, as if it were bleeding, which I thought was pretty insane. I thought that was, that right there is a pretty crazy revelation, and I think this is now canon. So if that's the case, wow, that's nuts. Um, and then you basically see Vader, because um, I believe Palpatine wants him to be secretive. I don't think initially it's Vader going and just like killing tons of stormtroopers when he gets pissed off and everything. Right after he's made, he's basically taken away in secret and taken to a planet and there's a vehicle that's left there for him, but unfortunately the Emperor remarks that it looks like someone has stolen it. So Vader goes and hunts down the people that stole it and slaughters them, and that's about it. There's no scene of him getting the ship and leaving or anything like that. It just felt like it just ended. And I I, I don't know, I just felt like, you know, the, the writer, who's a good writer, Charles Sewell, um, he wanted to go further and then just decided to break it right there. And it's just an odd break. It's not, it doesn't feel that satisfying for an ending of Darth Vader issue one. Um, but yeah, the art's really good. It's cool being in that end of Revenge of the Sith era. So end of episode three and, um, characterization's done pretty well. I didn't think this is as solid as the issue one of Star Wars, the Star Wars comic that came out in 2015. I thought that was really strong and there's some amazing Vader stuff in there and um, that was a really good book. Uh, this is pretty good so far but I need to read issue two to decide if I'm going to continue with it. Um, wasn't blown away by it to be honest with you. Okay everybody so what I'm going to be doing right now is talking to you and in the background I'm going to be shuffling all the books that we're actually uh, looking at. So I'll just be a second here. Give me one moment. Let's see here. In no particular order. Actually, no, they have to be in an order. I'm sorry. <laughs> in no particular order. Yes. That, that, that would work well for a battle. That would be great. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so again, Walking Dead. Um, it was good. I liked it. I just felt a little bit lost because, you know, it's issue 168. And, you know, a lot of talking. I don't understand uh, why Rick is with Negan in a way where Rick is in control and in charge and like hasn't killed Negan I I'm still trying to wrap my head around that I you know because again watching the TV show um but it was good I liked it you know same style of artwork you're used to from Walking Dead and the whole black and white thing um yeah well, there's nothing wrong with it however Walking Dead, issue 168, The Road's End. You were good. You were good. Um, I was a little confused by you. And um, again, I look at this as someone, you know, who's just picks up an issue off the rack and they follow it. Does it make any sense? Is it good? Entertaining. And I mean, it is as entertaining as Talking Heads could be, but... I'm sure 
that it made sense if you had the previous issue and it worked out a lot better. Um, so I don't think it was bad. I just thought it was really, really light on any kind of action whatsoever. It was mostly just talking heads. So you are stripped of your bag and your board and you are flung onto the ash heaps of history. You are not the winner of Comicus. Next up, we have Batman 24. Um, you know, the big uh, whole Batman and Catwoman storyline was only like four pages, roughly. Not that much. And everything else was Batman talking to Gotham Girl and kind of felt slightly like a missed opportunity, too, because the elements that I thought would lead to his decision with Selina, I thought were going to be talked about and from the Button storyline, because there's some interesting notions that Bruce is mulling around in his head after he sees um, his father and everything. And um, I just thought they'd focus on that, but they didn't, which is a surprise to me. And I felt it was a bit of a missed opportunity. Um, it's still good. I mean, it was a good Batman issue. It's Tom King, who I like a lot as a writer. Um, however, Batman issue 24. It was fun to see the whole Selena Kyle and Bruce thing. Um, I'll leave it, be it short. I'd say it's four to six pages at the most. I think it's more like four pages. Um, mostly it's a story of Batman and uh, Gotham Girl. And it was good. Um, you know, it wasn't bad or anything, but it wasn't like some amazing issue that just blew, blew blows your mind, you know? It wasn't like that. So, you, my friend Batman, are stripped of your bag and board and thrown into the fires of hell. And then there were two. Next up, we have Darth Vader issue one. Okay. So I'm a huge Darth Vader and Star Wars fan. And it was cool to find out about the kyber crystals and the bleeding and all that. That was interesting. Um, but I didn't feel enough happened in the issue. Um, I don't know. It seems like it's going to move extremely slowly. And I'll be able to know more once issue two comes out. But at this point, um, it's got really good art. And um, it's got some interesting concepts, more than a strong story so far. And uh, it's got that ridiculous price tag, $4.99, which I don't know, man. It just seems like uh, it should be, you know, $3.99. Again, I'd prefer $2.99, but Marvel's ship has sailed on that whole uh, $3.99 thing mostly. Although I think most of their books are just once a month versus DC twice a month, so... Someone told me I was changing, but I didn't know if that actually happened yet, so I have no idea. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Darth Vader issue one. I like Darth Vader. I like red lightsabers. Both of those things are in here. Plus, it's pretty cool that they started out right at the end of episode three, right at the end, during that actual scene of him screaming no. Um, but I have to say no to Darth Vader issue one as being winner of Comicus this week. So I must strip you of your bag and board and toss you into the Vespin shoot thing from Empire Strikes Back. Okay, um, let's see here. And finally, we have Rocket Issue 2. It was a huge surprise for me. This is a great book. And again, I thought Issue 1 wasn't that good. And I don't know. It, I felt it was trying to be a 1930s crime thing, and it just didn't work. It Elements were amusing, but it just didn't seem solid. And... This, to me, was a much better issue. Um, I liked this one a lot more. And uh, looking back now, I think I'll reread one again, you know, and see. Uh, but it wasn't bad. It was good, issue one. It just it wasn't stellar. This is pretty stellar. Um, Rocket 2, if they can continue this level of quality, I highly recommend checking it out. 
Uh, it's not what you're expecting. It's not a Guardian, Guardian of the Galaxy story. It's a Rocket Raccoon story. And this one, again, um, there's some amazing scenes, some very funny moments, and it's just like constantly some crazy aliens with crazy abilities. Um, in a way, it's similar to All-Star... Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, which has been a really good book, too. Um, we've reviewed that already. We talked about that in Comicus either last week or the week before, and uh, that was a good book. That was good. I don't, I don't think, I don't remember if it won or anything, but it was damn good. Um, but this is like the kind of like the next level because the whole feel of it, the whole prose thing actually works, especially in this issue. And uh, yeah, I, I really love this issue. And I highly recommend you check out Rocket Issue 2. So that means Rocket Issue 2. You were amusing. You had some great clever ideas with different uh, types of uh, aliens, which I really liked. Uh, it almost was like a courtroom drama with insane elements. And then you brought in bizarre doppelgangers, uh, Froggy Nelson, and Matt Murdock, which was icing on the cake, especially when you set up, I, gee, as long as this doesn't happen, we'll be fine with this case. Trust me, once you see what happens, it's very amusing, but I won't say what that is. Um, but yeah, Rocket 2 is really good, and because of that, Rocket 2, you keep your bag and board. You are the winner of Comicus this week. And uh, the book that I would recommend out of all the other ones this week. Now, that doesn't mean these other ones weren't good. Um, I'm going to start to do what Comicus is tell you what other books I thought were good and worth getting, as well as having the main winner. But, you know, it's not like all the rest are trash, even though, you know, I joke about throwing them into the fires of hell or into the sun or some craziness like that. Um, so, one second here. If anyone, again, has any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer for you. Um... Uh, Walking Dead, I mean, it's a good series, but that issue was, you know, if you're not following it, it's going to be really rough to follow. Um, it's <laughs> talking heads, and only two or three names are mentioned, and one of those people is dead. And that's the reason people are talking, because <laughs> they're upset about that person being dead. So, yeah, I mean, if you like Walking Dead, I would read it. It wasn't bad. It just was really hard to follow. Um, Batman was good. Um, I think that's going to be an interestingly pivotal moment when he uh, speaks with Selena, and um, that was good. Darth Vader and Mifion. I don't know about that one. Um, you know, even if I don't review it, I'll make a comment in a future episode about issue two, um, because I'm interested in how that's going to be, and it's hard, just like a TV show. It, a pilot type of thing is difficult, and that's like the first issue of a comic. It's like a pilot of a TV show in a way. Um, it's hard to do it sometimes, so I'll give issue two a chance. But it didn't, it didn't wow me, you know. Um, let's see what else did I look at. I think that's everything, except Rocket Two. Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to choose just one book this week, I would go with Rocket Two. It's very unique. It's very funny. Um, I think it's very enjoyable. Do I have any questions? Anyone have any uh, questions on comic books? I will preface that with on comic books. So they're not, you know, insane questions. I might also move the time of Comicus because it just seems like most of my regular viewers can't make this time. I've noticed that from a lot of viewers, so... I might have to change the time. I don't know if I would do, I still want Wednesday, but if I would do it at 8 p.m. Central rather than 7 or 9 p.m., I think Wednesday gives you that immediacy, you know, because the books just came out. And unless there's some huge, huge information about those books and like, you know, people are just psyched over it, you'll probably be able to pick up that book Thursday or Friday. Uh, very few books are going to sell out at comic shops unless, you know, it's something like The Button with the lenticular cover which issue four there were some issues trying to get a hold of that that was a, that was fun no it wasn't fun at all um but yeah i want to thank you all for watching you've been awesome and uh comicus is uh available on demand you know you can watch previous ones on twitch twitch.tv 
Um, well, you should know it's under Hoarder Gamer because you're, that's what you're watching right now. Um, yeah. Let's see, do I have any comments? Uh, I mentioned about uh, Tommy and the Tapeworm um, on the uh, Facebook page I have that um, I am talking to an artist right now, very talented, excellent artist, and uh, he's actually done work for me for the Twitch page, which I haven't unveiled fully yet. Um, but yes, there's a good chance he might be doing the artwork for Tommy too. I don't know that for sure that it's not finalized yet, but I would hope so. We'll see. Uh, but I want to thank you all for watching. You've been awesome. And if I don't see any questions in the next, like, 20, 30 seconds, we're going to end things. So, yeah. But, yeah, Rocket 2, really good stuff. Really good. Um, I'm glad I picked it up because Issue 1, like I said, was just okay. And I don't know. People seem to love Issue 1, but I was just like, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't, I didn't get it or, I mean... I, again, I got what they were trying to do, the conceit they were going for. I just didn't think they pulled it off, and everyone else seemed to. So that's kind of a weird situation for me. But no, issue two, I felt really did well. And uh, there's it was just kind of like nothing I've read in a long time. So, yeah. Yeah, I really liked that. I mean, it might have been just the, um, it was just too hard-boiled and not, and not mixed in with the, you know, galactic craziness. Because uh, this definitely has a mix of everything in it. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you very much for watching. Again, I'm Hoarder Gamer. Um, I usually don't stream games on Wednesday, but I might do a stream tonight. I'm not sure yet. I'll If you check out my Discord, you can check that out. Um, yeah, but I do plan on uh, um, possibly moving to Time of Comicus. That might be doing that. If I do, that'll be announced on my Facebook page too, and on Twitter and everywhere else. So, do not worry about that. Um, yeah, still, I mean, not sure if I'd want to do this as soon as next week though. I don't know if I want to do seven seven p.m. next week as well, or if I want to do eight p.m. I think just an hour or two later would work out better for people's schedules. <laughs> Because I'm like never on this early, so people are probably like, what's going on, you know? Anyway, thank you all very much, and uh, I, I thank you uh, for watching Comicus. Have a good night, everybody, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.